Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn AP Chem series here at Learn AP. Today we're going to talk about kinetic molecular theory in real gases. So we're going to talk about kinetic molecular theory, obviously, Graham's law of effusion, average kinetic energy, average kinetic velocity, and then as promised in the last video, we're going to talk about a real gas versus an ideal gas. Uh, before we get going, I just want to say if you guys know somebody who might find our videos helpful, we would really appreciate a recommendation. Um, also, if you guys have questions on the video or anything about AP Chem in general, you can ask in the comments section below, or you can also ask in our weekly live streams we do every Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Other than that, we'll get started. All right, so let's first talk about kinetic molecular theory, and just KMT for short. And this describes gases at the individual atomic level. So PV equals NRT is sort of describing gases from a more macro level, from a more general standpoint. But KMT is going to talk about atoms at the molecular standpoint, so like individual atoms. It has five main postulates. And the first is that gases consist of molecules and or atoms moving in random directions. So if I have a bunch of gas molecules in some sample, these are going to move in completely random directions, you know, without sort of any predictor. So that's what the first postulate says. The second one says that collisions between these molecules are perfectly elastic. So basically, if one gas molecule hits off the other at, say, 4 meters per second, Let's pretend that this doesn't take any of the any of the energy, and this is just going to bounce back at exactly four meters per second. So no energy is lost to like friction or anything. So that's what the second postulate says. Now the third one is that the volume occupied by individual molecules and/or atoms is small enough to be negligible. So if we have a bunch of atoms here in some sort of gas mixture, the actual size of these atoms is so small that we can just completely neglect it. Now the fourth is that the attraction or repulsion between molecules and our atoms is small enough to be negligible. So let's say that sort of this side is positive and this side is negative. And the same is true of this gas molecule. KMT, the fourth postulate, says that this repulsion here is so small that we can just forget about it. And the fifth postulate says that the average kinetic energy of molecules and or atoms in a gas is directly proportional to the temperature, again, given in Kelvin. All right, so tying into kinetic molecular theory is Graham's law of effusion. And this says that the square root of m1 over m2 is equal to the velocity of the second one over the velocity of the first. And this is explained by KMT. So if you don't understand that, sort of rewind and make sure that you understand the five postulates that I talked about. Now it's assumed here that our diffusion, or I'm sorry, effusion, effusion, described is through a pinhole into a vacuum. So the gas is sort of escaping through a very small pinhole and it's going out into a vacuum filled with no atoms. That's the assumption. And for the purposes of AP chemistry, you can assume that this is true, even if it doesn't say into a vacuum. Now our units here, M is molar mass and VRMS is in moles per second. So this is the velocity of moles sort of escaping through the pinhole per second. All right, so let's talk about average kinetic energy and velocity. And these are both given by Ke equals one half mv squared. So definitely memorize this for the AP test, um, as well as Graham's law of effusion. Now note that Ke and v squared here are both averages 
These aren't describing the individual kinetic energy of atoms in a gas mixture, but rather the average kinetic energy. Similarly for velocity, we're not describing the velocity of individual gas particles, but rather the average velocity of the gas mixture. Now Ke is our average kinetic energy given in joules. And it's sort of strange here, our mass is given in kilograms and our velocity is in meters per second. And so the reason that this is in kilograms is that joules is you can sort of break it down and it's really weird and you need to have kilograms to get joules so that's where the mass comes from it's not molar mass it's on atomic mass it's the mass of the gas in kilograms alright so now let's talk about real gases versus ideal gases now an ideal gas assumes that particles have no volume and that they have no attractive or repulsive forces. Now this is a pretty fair assumption to make at high temperature and high volume. It's pretty true. And although it's not 100% true, the actual attractive forces and repulsive forces are so small that we can basically forget about them, as well as the volume of individual particles. Now, like I said, normally these are only slightly inaccurate in that the actual inaccuracies make little differences in our calculations. Now, if a gas is cooled or compressed, so small volume, or it's cooled down to a lower temperature, these assumptions now do make a difference. So think about it. If we have a very large container and we have these gases that have volume, it's not really going to make a difference. But if I shrink this down to a really small volume, now these particles are probably actually going to hit each other. So now we have to account for the, the actual size of the atoms. Similarly, if we're cooling down everything, they're going to move slower and our attractive forces are going to go up. And thus, we end up with the van der Waals equation for real gases. And this is sort of this uh, ugly P plus N squared times A over V squared times the quantity V minus BN equals NRT. Now, A here represents the strength of our attractive forces, and a higher A means that there's more attraction. B represents the size of the gas molecules, with a higher B representing a larger molecule. Now note that if I plug in A equals 0 and B equals 0, I get this, the ideal gas law, where I have no attractive forces and no volume. Now, as far as memorizing this formula for the AP test, I do not think that you have to memorize this formula itself. That being said, you should know what A represents, what B represents, why the van der Waals equation exists, and sort of what it tries to uh, get at, as well as what a higher A and B would mean. Now if someone has sort of a different idea that you do need to memorize this, uh, leave a comment and I'll update the description if any new information comes in. So be sure to check that out for sort of a final say on actually memorizing this, but I'm pretty sure that you don't have to memorize that equation for the AP test, but rather you just sort of need to understand it. Alright, so that brings me to today's challenge problem. If oxygen gas diffuses through a pinhole into a vacuum, at 3.21 moles per second, how fast would carbon dioxide diffuse at the same temperature and pressure? The solution to this problem is on our website, learn-ap.com, and I'll also put a direct link in the description. If you guys found this video helpful, please take that two seconds to hit the like button. That lets us know that we should continue to put out more content and help you guys. And be sure to subscribe for future content. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you guys never miss a live stream. And those are every Sunday 
from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern for chem. And if you guys are taking calc, those are from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern, also every Sunday. Links for the Facebook and Twitter will also be in the description. Leave a comment if you're still confused about anything, or also any other comments on the video in general. Other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.